Welcome to Growing in Grace, a weekly program featuring informal conversation to help with growth in understanding the gospel and to live in the freedom that comes through Jesus Christ. And now, here's the host of Growing in Grace, Mike Kapler and Joel Brzezinski. Hey there, yeah, I'm Joel and I got my good friend Mike with me. I'm the Breeze Man, that's my nickname, and Cap. Mike Kepler's nickname. Uh, That's kind of what people began to call us in our lives in radio. I've been out of radio for a while, Cap, but you've been back into into, uh, the radio scene for a little while now. You know, some people might think that we do this because of our radio background, but I wanted, I just want to give a little quick little word for Dave Lesniak, who has, he's the one that invited me to do this program for Grace Walk Internet Radio. And I just want to give a big thanks for running this whole show, I mean, for so long, this whole Grace Walk Internet Radio thing, because without that, Mike, you and I wouldn't be doing this thing. If he wouldn't have asked me to do it, to have it on there, none of this would be going on. And it's just such a wonderful ministry. And I would like to just personally, we don't normally do this, but I'd like to ask some of our listeners if they would, and we're not great big fundraisers here, but it does cost to get the Grace Walk Internet Radio on the air, if you would think of supporting that, I, I think you can send a donation to Grace Walk Ministries, and you, you can do that through the Grace Walk website at gracewalk.org. Just wanted to give a quick plug for that. It's something we don't normally do here. We're not normally asking for money. We just do this because it's, hey, we're just two guys. It's you and me, Cap, uh, getting together to talk about this wonderful life of grace. I just wanted to give a quick plug for that. Yeah, and the money you just asked for there uh, going to, uh, to to Grace Walk Radio and Grace Walk Ministries, so certainly worth it, that's for sure. Yeah. Um, we, left, we left off last week, Joel, with um, uh, in Galatians chapter 4, where Paul had referred to the, uh, the law as uh, having given birth to bondage, and he uh, specifically talked about the Ten Commandments, the law that was given on Mount Sinai. We don't need to elaborate a lot on that. You can always go back and listen to the program at graceroots.org. But that's where we left off last week. The thing we wanted to point out, though, as, as we started to last week, was all the different laws, hundreds and hundreds of laws, not just the Ten Commandments, even though Paul pointed those out, but this bondage that the law brought. You know, even in the top ten, Joel, even on those Ten Commandments, there are people in the church world today who actually think they're, they're, they're keeping them. And we can't, we, we'll put our own black highlighter to what we want to when it comes to law. Well, this one, uh, yes, this one, probably not for me. Uh, even the Sabbath, which was a top ten, right? It was in the, you know, the, the, the Ten Commandments. Uh, how many people keep the Sabbath? You, you've not only got that one that isn't kept by most people, I'm sure. Uh, even the Jews couldn't keep it because you've got all these rules within that one. Do you know how many other rules are within the, the, the rule of the Sabbath? The law of the Sabbath has so many laws inside of it that it's mind-boggling. And you mentioned uh, before the program, Joel, before we recorded, that uh, the Jews added to it. They loved that Sabbath law because it helped them gain more control over their flock. And uh, religionists like to do that. It's like comparing a free country to communism. It's like spiritual dictatorship for some religious leaders to have control over their flock. And the law and commandments uh, give... Well, it give legalists an opportunity to do that. Yeah, it sure does. And and even you know, we can go even deeper with this in that not only these uh, 610 plus laws that are in the old covenant, and not only the the ones that the uh, the Jews had added on top of all that, but even in the church world today, people are making up their own laws and making it as if this is the way church is supposed to be. This is the way that life in Christ is supposed to be. Whether it's something as simple as saying you need to, you're, you're supposed to read your Bible every day, or you're supposed to pray every day, or whether it's you're supposed to do this or you're supposed to that, whatever rules people come up with, all of that can be bondage. It can be stuff that... Oh, it might sound good, and it, and it might sound like, hey, if people would just follow this stuff, man, uh, life in Christ would be such a great thing. But really, when when it gets down to it, whether you're trying to follow one law or whether you're trying to follow 10 or 610 or however many, uh, the point uh, that Paul makes is that it's all bondage because we weren't meant to live by laws. We weren't meant to live by rules. 
when Adam and Eve were created, God didn't sit there and say, okay, guys, here's a bunch of commandments that I want you to follow. He just wanted them to walk with him in faith. I mean, it was really, hey, I'm God, and I've created you, and I love you. I have a great passion for you. Eat from the tree of life, which I believe represents Jesus. Just life. It's life that he created us for. They made the choice that, hey, we're going to follow this other tree here. We're going to walk according to the knowledge of good and evil. That's when everything got messed up, was when man made it about rules and laws. And so freedom comes, as we talked about last week. Paul said, the law is not of faith. Uh, So true freedom comes not when we try to follow rules and laws and commandments, but it comes when we walk in faith. And so I know this week we want to talk somewhat about, okay, if we're not living under the law, and if we're not living by rules, then what is our motivation to live the Christian life? Well, let me springboard off of that, Joel. Give me just a minute to get to it, though. Uh, Just to summarize what we just said, Jesus didn't come to help us keep the law. He came to deliver us from it. So we have no relationship to the law whatsoever. Our, our relationship now is, is with a person, Jesus Christ. And we mentioned this before, too, that the law was not given to Christians. It was not given to believers. Uh, the law is not made for a righteous man, Paul wrote to Timothy, but for those who are lo- uh, lawless and rebellious. So the law not made for the Christian, but for the unbeliever, uh, without spending much more time on that. The other thing I wanted to point out as, as we move along here, Joel, is... Uh, what you were just talking about. There are those who would say, well, if you don't have the law, if you don't have commandments to live by, then people are just going to go do what they want, and they'll just live ungodly lifestyles and all that stuff. You're, you're, this grace stuff that you guys are teaching is going to cause people to go the wrong direction. And, and even after all the time we've spent talking about what the law does, it, it does not help people live right. Understand that. That's not what the law does. That's not the purpose of the law. In fact, it does um, just the opposite. The law is good, and we'll talk more about that. We're not against the law in its proper place. It's just that it doesn't. It, it, it has no place in the life of a believer anymore. So any fear that uh, or any concern, uh, people who are worried about grace uh, causing people to sin or leading them to sin, th- this is totally not scriptural. Uh, Let's look at what Paul said in Titus. For the grace of God has appeared. For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all men, instructing us to deny ungodliness and worldly desires and to live sensibly, righteously, and godly in the present age. So when we're abiding in Christ, trusting him, and, and, and yielding to, to that life that lives within us and, and trusting that life to flow through us as we abide in him and our focus stays on Jesus Christ, the desires that he has become our own because that's a part of our new identity now. Yes, you can sin. You can go and do what you want. You are free to make mistakes. But that's not who you are. And as you focus on God's grace and his life within you, then that life and that relationship, that unconditional love relationship that you have going back and forth with him is going to flow out of you. It's not going to lead you to want to sin. It's going to lead you to want to do the right thing. That's what grace does. Yeah. See, see, faith and grace do something that law could never do. You know, law could never make a man righteous. We've pointed that out plenty of times. And the law can never, ever help a person to live right. Uh, the law can't lift a finger, won't lift a finger to help anyone live right. It's it's full of demands. It's full of commands. It's full of everything that would say, hey, you need to do this, but it will never, ever give the power for a person to keep it. And so we brought up this before, we, and I think this is key here, as we, we bring up Galatians 2, uh, 19 through 21. Paul said, so we had to die to the law so that we could live to God. And then the key here then is as we talk about our motivation for living the Christian life and and just how we go about living this life of faith, he says, I've been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. That's the key. That's what it's all about. It's not about me keeping the law. It's about Christ himself who lives in me. And he says, the life that I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God. And so that's really where 
the entire source that's the entire source of our life in Christ it's it's his very life and so like you say we have the mind of Christ the bible says elsewhere and so when we get thoughts and desires that we sense these are from god and as long as they don't go against what we really know is is not the truth well we can understand that man these thoughts and desires are from god himself because it's Christ who lives in me. I think we're so scared, you know, a lot of us. We're scared to go with our desires. We're scared to, and we're always questioning, was that from God or wasn't it from God? And I think that fear, which again is not a representative of our life of faith, I think that fear keeps us from really moving ahead and, and pursuing these desires that we have that really are from God. Our motivation, again, is the life of Christ that's in us, and, it's, and indeed it's, it's his life that, that makes us move ahead as we trust and rest. Yeah, so the good news here is we don't have to strain or struggle to keep the rules anymore, the commandments. Uh, the gospel means good news, and it's great news to know that we don't have to strain and, and struggle to keep the law. God has released us from our obligation to the law through the cross of Jesus Christ. Uh, we covered that in Romans chapter 7, specifically there in verse 6. Uh, we died to the law. We are no longer in relationship to it anymore. Our relationship is in our new life source, uh, Jesus Christ. Yeah, and I, li- I like what you were saying before. I just wanted to highlight something where you had talked about, you know, where, where people say, well, if you just preach all this grace stuff, people are just going to go, you know, they're just going to want to go and sin. That is a very poor view of God's grace. If you think about it, God has given his grace. He gives it freely. He gives it abundantly. And then we have people that say, well, grace is just going to want to cause people to go and sin. Why in the world would God give so much grace in such abundance if if he thought it was going to go and cause people to sin? God loves us. He has a passion for us. God wants what's best for us. God wants us to live the abundant life. And so because of that, he freely and abundantly gives us his grace. And and I think it really is a cheap view of grace to say that it's going to cause us to go and sin. Joel, somebody posted something on Facebook. I think it was Megan, one of our one of our friends, and, and it was it was phenomenal. I don't know where she got it from, but it was fantastic. And it was something like this. Jesus plus anything equals nothing. Jesus plus nothing equals everything. Mm -hmm. Jesus and Jesus Christ alone is sufficient. Wow, isn't that the truth? Jesus plus nothing equals everything. He is sufficient. Well, hey, Cap, uh, before we started recording today, you were telling me uh, that something very interesting here. You were telling me that you know somebody who no longer breaks any laws or commandments, and you've really got me interested i'm eager to hear about that but unfortunately (laughs) we got to wrap things up for this time and uh, so we'll have to save that for next time and really uh, for the next few weeks actually we got something exciting to share Uh, next week marks our 200th growing in grace program and so we're going to be celebrating uh, by sharing some highlights from our past programs and actually we might spend two or three weeks doing this so stay tuned for that during the next few weeks And in the meantime, check out more information about Cap and I and the Growing in Grace program at graceroots.org. You've been listening to Growing in Grace with Mike Kapler and Joel Baruzicki, a weekly program featuring informal conversation to help with growth in understanding the gospel and to live in the freedom that comes through Jesus Christ. 